Hey, what's happening guys? Today, we're going to build this kit. And this particular kit was purchased from my Amazon wish list. It is the Zimmy Mark High Voltage Generator Arc Igniter Lighter Module. And uh, it's like $7 off of Amazon. So we're going to build it. I'm going to make a small modification to it. It comes with absolutely no instructions whatsoever, which is mostly easy until you get to the transformer here. So I did manage to find a picture of a completed one. I don't know how well you can see this, but it's going to help us because it's showing us that the see-through part of the coil there is facing up, and that tells us where our wires need to go. Now, the circuit that we're building is this one. And this is what's known as a DC blocking oscillator circuit. It's a single transistor NPN feedback oscillator. So basically what's going to happen is that when this coil discharges here, you know, it's going to uh, cut off from the collector here. I'm just going to shut that off when you press the switch, of course. You know, you're, you're energizing the gate, which causes current to flow here. But this coil is going to turn on and off very rapidly, almost... RF frequency energizing that coil and producing the high voltage on the other side. So let's build it. While we're doing this, I want to uh, say hi to my my friend Joey in Canada. Joey's had a rough time the last couple weeks, and just want you to know, bud, that thinking about you, and I'm here for you. Whatever that means. So for parts, we've got a 470 microfarad capacitor. We've got our transistor, which is a D880 from Fairchild. We've got a little 6x6 switch, and we're going to replace that with a longer switch. Same size. You know, it'll still fit the footprint. I just want a higher switch because I'm thinking about mounting this or enclosing it. And uh, the little switch just, just wouldn't do it. We got a two-port screw terminal. We've got a silicone diode. We've got a 33-ohm resistor. This is like a big one. This is like a one-watt resistor. And our circuit board and that guy there a little zip tie so where do we begin all right I am going to begin with our NPN transistor there in the center let's adjust the camera a little bit so we can see better what we're doing so we want to make sure that we can Line up the hole there. And at this point, I'm just making sure that everything fits. There we go. So we'll pull that out. And we'll add some thermal compound. To this. PCB. Heat sink. Yeah, I know that's too much thermal compound. It just doesn't come out of this little syringe very easily. So we'll fit that in there. Then we'll put the, the screw through it. <laughs> Quite a mess there. 
All right, let's clean off some of that thermal compound. Probably shouldn't have used that at all, to tell you the truth. So can't get that screw on there. cross thread come on there we go all right now that that's on good and tight we will solder in the connections Well, this is going to be the hardest working part of your circuit. So you want to make sure you got good solder joint here. And this. Not seem to want to be taking solder very well. There we go. So it looks good. Clean out the rest of that heat sink squeeze out and we'll be right back. All right, so we got that in and we cleaned it up pretty well all looks good next up let's do our diode this is a 5819 it looks like I'm not sure what that is just a silicon diode most important thing with the diode is that you get it oriented properly if you put it in backwards nothing is going to happen because as you know a diode is an electronic one-way valve and that's what we're going with it here we're using it to prevent the current from running backwards through our oscillator so we'll get that guy soldered in we got our nice little shiny Hershey's Kisses. And we'll clip it off. Next up is our 33 watt or 33 ohm one rot resistor. 33 watt resistor would be pretty doggone big. And for my friend Florida man. There's resistor oriented so it can be read left to right as God intended. Yep. Take a little more. Get that soldered in there. Again, we have our nice. Tiny Hershey's Kisses, I'm sorry, phone didn't focus there. Alright, next up we have the switch. And again, this time we're using the tall switch. Is 
the soldering iron a little clean. Always keep your tip clean. Now the switch is going to control the entire circuit, so it is relatively important that we get it soldered in well. Sorry I missed the first part of that. And that joint right there needs a little more loving. There we go. All good. All right, moving along. Next up is our capacitor. This is the 47 microfarad, 16 volt. Bend it so that it sits flat on the board. Apparently I didn't bend it in the right place. Let's try that and see if that's a little better. Yeah, that'll work just fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get it in the frame, first of all. And I'm going to solder one of these connections. Make sure it's sitting how I want. And we'll come back. And solder the other one. Cut off the extra. And then we're on to our jumper. Which I should have uh, put on before the switch because the switch is higher. One moment. A little bit of tape, hold that in place just fine. Give our soldering iron a clean. I'm gonna solder it in there, take off the tape, make sure it's sitting flush, and it is. Then we can solder in the other connection. <laughs> Using my pinky to hold the board. If you do that, make sure you know where your fingers are at all times. You do not want to burn yourself with a soldering iron. Those burns hurt for days. Just not happy with that. There we go. Now we got a decent looking joint here. Yep. Everything looks good. So that leaves us with the final component. The transformer. You can see we have a thin wire, a twisted pair, and a thick wire. And they go in, as we're looking at it, thin wire to the left, twisted pair in the middle, and thick wire to the right 
order to make this work, we're going to have to twist it way up here. Then the other thing I want to check is to make sure that the insulation has been removed from those wires. Because if it hasn't, not only are we going to have trouble soldering them, but we are going to have trouble getting any uh, electrical conductivity through them. So just what I want to do is I'm just going to take the multimeter here, just test for continuity. See, that's what I was afraid of. So we're going to have to clean those wires off. Many ways to do that. You can burn it off. You can scrape it off. Not sure what I'm going to do yet. The insulation is an enameled coating. You should, in theory, be able to burn off. So we'll try that. We have the final one. Let that cool for a minute and we'll check it. All right, while well, we're waiting for uh, the transformer to cool down, you can see here. Here it is, the uh, Zimimark one set high voltage generator, arc igniter, lighter kit module, DC, three to five volt arc generator, boost transformer, electronic production, DIY suite. Here's a picture of the circuit. List of the components. Picture of the circuit board, more components, and absolutely no instructions whatsoever. So the frequency is going to be between 20 and 25 kilohertz with an arc length of 5 to 8 millimeters. There, um, somewhere I read they caution you that the, uh, the arc should never be bigger than a centimeter. Yeah, here it is. It is forbidden to exceed mark maximum arcing distance of one centimeter. Now she says work, needed instructions, work for 15 seconds. Some people had some trouble, and I am um, guessing that they didn't understand they needed to remove the insulation from these wires. So we will find out. Okay. Brought some sandpaper here. This is uh, 120 grit. Just see if we can't. Clean these up a little. And be real careful when you do this. Make sure you hold the wire coming out of the transformer so that you don't accidentally rip it off when you do this. Oh! just like that good thing there's still plenty in there oh, one moment Oh, 
guess I forgot to pause it there. All right, let's see if we got a better connection now. Yep. That one is still not great. So, what I want to do next is clean them a little bit. I'm going to use some acetone. You, uh, you want to make sure this is completely dry before you apply heat and electricity to the solder. Because yes, acetone is most definitely flammable. All right. So once again, make sure we have the side up where you can see it. There we go. Some of that off. Let's see if we can get this guy in there. Uh, something like that. And then hopefully we will be able to solder that together. I'm just going to get another piece of tape. I just want to hold it in place while I'm soldering. Yes, there are other better ways to do this, but this is the way I am doing this today. Right, got a flex pen here. Gonna make sure I've got plenty of flux. Clean my tip. Tin it a little bit for a thermal transfer. Then we're gonna solder that first connection. feels pretty good let's do the second one but let's get some more some more solder on there What's important is that those wires are also soldered together, which is why I'm going over this and over this like that. And one more. And once again, using plenty flux here what you can do also get yourself a nice glob of solder hanging on the iron then you can just kind of work it over these where you're worried about it not conducting And it will generally, I say generally, burn off the insulation and allow you access. So I'm going to cut these off, but I'm going to leave just a little bit 
on them for right now in case this isn't good and I have to pull it out and redo it somehow. All right, so we got that guy on there like that. Now we need to get our zip tie in, important it's in the right direction. I do not place much faith in this zip tie. Now these wires are supposed to be no more than a centimeter apart. That's pretty close. Let us hook it up. One moment. Okay, we should have everything together now. You can see if you look over here, we have the power supply. Here we go. At 5 volts, 3 amps. We have our wires spaced there at just about a millimeter. Now I'm going to connect our power wires. Green is ground in this case, so I'm connecting my ground first. Then red is the positive. So I'm going to connect that. And, and I'm looking for something. Let me stick a piece of paper in there to protect that. All right, we are powered on. Five volts, zero amps. And what happens when I press the button? It's, it's drawing 113 milliamps, but I am not seeing an arc. Okay, it is there, but man, it's light. Let me try something else here. Give me a second. All right, a little bit of sanding. A little darker out. Let's see what we get now. Ready? Press the button. Yeah, that's pretty bright. What I ended up having to do was clean off more of those wires there. Oh, there is a strong smell of ozone. If you get yourself one of these kits, make absolutely certain that your width is, yeah, a millimeter or less, or you could burn the whole thing up. So, there it is. I forget who bought this from my wish list. They bought me another thing, too, that we already looked at. But thank you very much. That was fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Also, everybody who sent uh, their prayers, thoughts, and condolences, my mom's death, thank you so much. We, uh, we buried her on Thursday, and I miss her. But she lives in my heart. And what she taught me, and and what she gave to Blake and how she, you know, taught him as well. So life goes on, right? Right. All right, guys, that's it. I'm out. Peace.